Well, thank you guys for having a great time. Are you having a good time? Well, just remember <clears throat> that <clears throat> there's always a story behind every story. And I think that if you stop and think about it a little bit, you realize that a lot of us come from different backgrounds and we come from different careers. And I had a career also. I've had a couple of dreams in life, certainly before Amway. Amway was something that came along later on, but I've had three dreams in life. The reason I say that I've had only three dreams in life is because I believe that if a man tells me that he's got a dream every other week, then he doesn't understand what a dream is. A dream is a burn within, a burn. It's, the burn is so high and so determined that you become obsessed with winning in a certain area. That's called a dream. You become like a fanatic. You become a man convicted to what you want from life. You become consumed, literally consumed with what you have decided to do in that particular moment in your life. And I know that you guys do not get consumed every other week, but I've been consumed a couple of times with something that I wanted so bad that I just couldn't let it go. First thing I wanted always in life, my first dream was to be a family man. I know this sounds weird to some of you guys, but I, come, I wouldn't wish my youth on you no matter what. I don't come from a good background. I was born in Queens, New York. <clears throat> I was raised in the Bronx. My mom and my dad divorced when I was very small. My mother died when I was four years old. My dad bounced around from marriage to marriage. My dad was a waiter. He didn't have much money, didn't have much of a lifestyle. I'm the only child. I have no brothers. I have no sisters. Always wish for one. Don't know what that's like. I wish I had a brother or a sister. Had no home life at all. Had to go to work when I was 14 years old, delivering newspapers out in the streets. I used to bring all my money at home, give it all to my dad so he could support him and I and the next wife he had, because he's had more than two. I don't come from a very stable background. Some people call it a dysfunctional family. You call it whatever you want. I had one dream in life early, early on. I just wanted to get old enough to get out of there. Some of you guys may relate to this. Some of you guys may not relate. What kind of people are Diamond Directs? Well, they must all be so stable. It's incredible. They must all be just perfect for this kind of business. And these guys are just born leaders and they're just born Diamond people. In other words, they just have everything in order. They come from this incredible background. They have this incredible base of operation. They're just so stable in everything in life that that's why they become Diamond Directs. Wrong. As a matter of fact, when you be become a Direct one day and you start shaking hands with other Diamonds, you start going to Diamond Club, and you start meeting other guys, you're going to realize that a Diamond Direct is just a man and a woman with a dream. They're just common folks like you. That's why you qualify to be a Diamond. We're just common people with uncommon dreams. So I come out of that environment, delivered newspapers, gave my dad all that money. He used to give me my allowance out of there. I used to buy my own clothes, go to school, run around barefoot in my underwear, I call it, in New York, in the Bronx. We used to live in a high-rise apartment. I used to sit on the fire escape, watch the subways go by, and wonder what it'd be like to one day have something. I lived in a light, little tiny bedroom with a little cot. My dad went to work every day as a waiter, and that's my background. That's where I come from. You might relate to some of that. I'm just a common guy. As I grew up, I had an attitude because I did not come from a good background. I got thrown out of a couple of schools, expelled from a couple of high schools. Just a terrible background. My first dream in life, as I began to realize that that was not the right way to come up, was to be a family man. I thought about the day that I would ha find a woman that I could relate to, she relate back, and we could be together for the rest of our lives. That was a dream that I'm living today after 23 years of marriage. As a matter of fact, I wish that some of you guys that have been married 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and I'm sure there's plenty of you out there, I wish that the big leaders in the business, like Jim and Nancy Tornin and all the rest of your leadership, one day, you know, this business includes a whole lot of stuff besides making money. There's a certain stability that comes along with this type of business. 
And I wish some of these older folks that have been married for so long would talk to us and tell us how they made it through 10, 20, 30, 40 years of marriage. Because of all of us that are living in this world today, we need more of that type of education. I want you to know that no... <clears throat> I want you to know that no marriage, no marriage that lasts 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years is ever just, is ever just rosy walk all the way through the process. All of us that have been married for any length of time at all, and you guys that have been married for a while, you know that you've been challenged in the past. Well, we've been challenged too a whole lot, but we've hung in there. That was my first dream, to be a dad. I wanted to raise my own kids. I know it sounds corny to you maybe, or maybe to some of you. I wanted one wife. I wanted a, a set of children. But for you guys that are young, that you're in the 20s, maybe early, early 20s, maybe you just got married. If I had to do it over again, I'm 48. I got three kids. If I had to do it over again, if you're going to build the Amway business to a diamond level or a successful big level, if I had to do it over again, I'd start earlier and have more. I wish I had six kids instead of three. I wish I had maybe eight. I love big families. I envy people that have such a great background. I never had it. I don't understand it. But that was my first dream, to have a family. And I'm, I'm living that today. We worked very hard to stay together for 23 years. We're still working on it right now. We work on it all the time. We talk about everything. We communicate constantly. If we feel fat, bad about something, we just talk about it. We just keep talking and talking and talking and talking. And we're living that dream right now. The second dream that I had in life, I've only had three. The second dream I had in life was to become an air traffic controller. I know it sounds strange, but I fell in love with that profession. I wanted to be an air, tra air traffic controller at a major hub. They call it a major hub. There's only a handful of them. It's kind of like being the elite of air traffic control. You got the big airports, Los Angeles, New York, Miami, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Chicago's O'Hare. There's maybe 25,000 air traffic controllers in the whole federal system. And out of the 25,000 air traffic controllers in the whole federal system, you might have 500 that are the elite. They're GS-14s. They're called major hub air traffic controllers. I dreamed about that. I wanted that profession, and I worked my brains out to get there. Remember, I left home at the age of 18. I got out of high school, and I was gone in two weeks. I left my home immediately. There was no environment to live in right there. I got out of there. Maybe like some of you guys. Got out immediately. Didn't know how to make a living, so I joined the military. 1966 to 1970, I was a sailor. Spent all my time aboard ship in the North Pacific. That's how I spent my time. But I got out of the house because I wanted out. That was no place to live. If you've got that kind of environment, if you've got that kind of background, if you don't come from a good environment, you qualify to be a Diamond Direct. One day, we'd like to hear your story and tell us where you came from and how you did it and the things that you had to overcome. <clears throat> If you're a hardcore guy, if you're not sold out on Amway yet, hang around long enough. One day, you might get sold out to the Amway business. As a matter of fact, part of the story is going to be the fact that I didn't relate to this at the beginning. I didn't want I'm not an Amway type of guy. I couldn't relate to this. I didn't know if I could stand up in front of people and talk to them. My wife had the dream first, not me. As a matter of fact, it took her almost a year to get me to show up at anything. I'm just like some of you guys. I have a career. I had a career. And I just didn't give Amway much credibility. Didn't understand what they did. Didn't understand how they did it. I was never a speaker. Didn't know how to speak to anybody. I was afraid of doing that. I had a guy ask me one time, Louis, when you got an Amway, how did you start off? How did you start off? I said, I started off scared to death. I started off so scared, as a matter of fact, that I couldn't believe it. But a man with a dream will not be denied. A man with a dream will not be denied. If it's a dream for you and it's a true dream, you will not be denied. You will be an Amway Diamond Direct. It's just a matter of time. A man with a dream will face his fears. When you face your fear long enough, your fears will disappear. It's only a matter of time. I don't care what your personality is. I don't care if you're a great speaker or not a great speaker. I don't care if you're a loner or an introvert. That's what I was. If you decide that one day you're going to be up here on this stage, Dornan's stage or anybody else's stage, if you're going to be a worldwide motivational speaker, you're going to make it happen, friend, because you're a warrior. You're a warrior in your heart, and you made a decision you're going to make it happen, and you will teach yourself how to be a motivational speaker. You will come out of your shell, and you will do it, period. Lock, stock, and barrel. That's a man with a dream, period.
I work my brains out. I work my brains out to be an air traffic controller. I ended up at Miami International Airport. Ten years at the big tower in Miami International. I love my career. I love my job. I want you to know I love every second of it. It was a dream. I was a radar certified full journeyman GS-14. Air traffic controller at a major hub. I was living my dream. Made 40 some thousand dollars a year. I, I guess the year that I got let go in 1981 with a big air traffic controller strike. I would have probably pulled in 47,000 that year, 48,000. Top of the line, you couldn't go no higher. GS-14 is it. GS-15, you got to manage an airport. And GS-16 is an appointment. I was at the top of my grade. I was at the top of my career. A couple of weeks ago, Foley and I sit down. Tim and Connie Foley are our upline diamonds. And we started laughing. And Foley reminded me. He said, Louie, isn't this funny? He said, just think. It would have taken your entire 10-year federal career as a GS-14 air traffic controller to pay last year's tax bill. And I said, isn't that funny? I said, isn't that a laugh? My second dream was to become an air traffic controller. I loved every second of it, and I loved working at Miami International Airport. In 1981, here's the beginning of the story. In 1981, Across the whole United States, there was a big air traffic controller strike. I watched 12,000 guys self-destruct. We accomplished nothing. Nothing ever happened. As a matter of fact, it's the difference between a positive environment and, neg and a negative environment. You will do what you are motivated to do by your peers. You talk about a negative union. The Air Traffic Controllers Union prior to 1981, it was called PATCO. I still carry my union card in my pocket. I got it in my wallet right this very moment. I want you to know that there was an attitude inside that union. We decided we were going to take on Ronald Reagan. We decided we were tougher than the government. We decided that we were going to shut down the skies. And we went on strike August 3rd of 1981. What a mistake. We didn't win anything. We shut down nothing. As a matter of fact, Ronald Reagan was ready for the war. He warned us. I still got a letter from 65 senators that told us, don't do what you're about to do because we're going to fire every one of you and we are prepared to go to war against your union. You are threatening the United States federal government. Don't do what you're going to do. Please. Don't do what you're going to do. You're putting your careers on the... We thought we were tougher than the, than the government. Went on strike. And folks, I went to jail. You see, I was vice president of Local 132 Miami International Airport. <coughs> Took the life right out of me. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I got indicted by the government. They put me in jail for two days. I ended up with a felony indictment. I had to hire myself two attorneys. Remember, I told you there's a story behind every story. I had to hire myself a, la a labor lawyer and a criminal lawyer to keep me out of jail. Got out on bond. Took the life out of me. My dream. They took the wind out of my sails. Everything I struggled for. I had to go down to the bank, plead that they wouldn't take my house. I had to go down to the power company and plead that they wouldn't turn off my lights. I had to go down to the phone company and plead that they wouldn't take my phone away. Couldn't find a job anywhere. In the military, I was an electrician. Electrician's mate. I went to every electrical shop in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. I told them I would sweep the floors if they just give me a job, $5 an hour. Anyhow, carry your tools for you. As a GS-14 air traffic controller, I was making $23 an hour. I would work for anything. Just pay me anything, just give me a job. I couldn't find a job. I was one of those air traffic controllers that went on strike, and on top of that, I was indicted for a felony. Finally, I got myself a job in Fort Lauderdale parking cars. People have flipped me quarters. 
and I'd take their Cadillacs and park them in the slot. One day I'm an air traffic controller, a professional, and the next day I'm parking cars in a restaurant. How would you feel? Takes the wind out of a man's sails. You don't feel the same anymore. Right around that time, November of 1981, I got a call from a guy that I had met at a party. Back then, I used to put down a few suds. The guy called me up. We had a drink together. We were in a party together. He took my business card, my card. He wrote down my name and my phone number. I forgot about the guy. Didn't, I didn't even know what he wanted from me. I was a coal contact for an Amway distributor, and I didn't know it. Right after that, about four months after that, I parked cars for about four months. Shortly thereafter, I got a job, finally. Still indicted for a felony. Going to court every other week. Going to court, going to court, going to court, going to court. Lawyers, 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 lawyers. Fighting my case, fighting my case, fighting my case. I didn't call no strike. Why did they indict me? I have no idea. Out of the 12,000 guys that went on strike, they indicted 77 guys. Why? have no idea. They never give us an answer. They wanted to make an example out of a handful of guys. Why they picked my name, I have no idea. I was never a radical. I didn't call for the strike. It was not my idea. I just went like anybody else. I don't know why they call on me. Got myself a job as a detective in Miami. The only reason I got myself a job as an investigator in Miami is because my neighbor felt sorry for me. My neighbor was a police officer in Miami. He came to my house and said, Louie, I know you're in a lot of trouble. Come to work for me. I'll teach you how to be an investigator. I told him, I said, Tommy, look, I'm indicted for a felony. I could be going to jail any day. I know. We did it. I went on strike. I did what they told. Whatever the, the newspapers say, I did that. I should, I'm going to jail. It's over. And he said, look, he said, as long as you're not convicted, you can work at anything you want to work. I'll pay you enough to make your mortgage payment. Come to work for me. I jumped on that like a heartbeat. Got on that wagon there, I went to work for him, started working as a detective. He paid me enough to make my mortgage payment, started making my mortgage payment, started paying my light bill, started paying my phone bill, and we were eating every day. Right about that time, I get a call from this guy that I don't know. I said, what do you want? You would have loved to approach me. This is why you don't want to keep anybody off your list. As a matter of fact, I hope that you're a guy sitting in this room with an attitude. I hope you're the guy sitting in this room that hates everything about this business. You don't want no part of Amway. You don't think you can do it. You don't believe it's anything. You think it's a pyramid. I want you to have the worst attitude in the world. Because if I can turn you all right th around this weekend, if I can flip you the other way about this business before I'm out of here this weekend, you will be a diamond direct in this business because you will have an attitude the other way, just as hardcore as you have it against the business, you will be a hardcore for the business. And nobody will take it from you, period. Guy comes to my house. This guy comes to my house. I opened the door. I said, what do you want? <laughs> I'm standing there in a t-shirt and my underwear. <laughs> Put a robe on. I walk. I said, come on in. You'd have loved this meeting, man. You'd have loved this. <clears throat> he says, where's your wife? I said, my wife's sleeping. What do you want? <laughs> he said, I need to talk to you about something that's very important. He says to me, go get your wife. I said, it, be, it better be really important. I'll be right back. I don't know why I did this, people. I want you to know that the Diamond Directs all have a story, and there's such a thin line, it's not even funny as to how people get in this business. I went to my bedroom. I told my wife, hey, come on, sweetheart. This guy wants to talk to us about something. I don't know who the guy is. Remember, I met this guy at a party. We had a couple of suds together. Come on over here. Let's talk to this guy and see what he wants.
Kathy comes out in her robe. Who is this guy? I said, I don't know. Come on, sit down right here. I was just like some of you guys, really excited about this meeting. Hurry up, I gotta go to work tomorrow, man. What do you want? He starts building me a dream. I said, I beg your pardon? He says, if you had more money, what would you do? My wife is going, who is this guy? I said, you remember? Him and I had a couple of sets together. I don't even know this guy. He's into, he says, what's your dream? I said, my dream is to stay out of jail. What's your dream? I'm still indicted for a felony. I said, do you know what trouble I'm in? Do you have any idea where I'm at here in life? I'm chasing bad guys in Miami. I don't even know what I'm doing. I could be shot any day. I'm sitting here. I'm an air traffic controller by profession. And you're asking me what my dream is. What are you, sick? I said, what are you doing in my house anyway? What's this about? What's your dream? I said, what's your dream? Now I'm messing around with this guy. You'd have loved this meeting. You'd have loved this meeting, man. I'm telling you. He says, well, my dream is to go to Egypt and ride camels. I grabbed my wife by the arm. I said, this guy wants to go to Egypt and ride camels. What time is it? I got to go to work tomorrow. What do you want from me? He says, well, this is you. And I'm looking over this guy like, what do you mean, you? What does mean, you? What is this circle with you? I said, give me your pen. You want me to put little eyes and this is you? Put a little smile on his face, you know? Is this me or is this you? This guy's really weird, Kathy. Back up a little bit, just back up. This Amway guy is strange. He gets into his thing. Folks, let me tell you something. I don't know why I did this. I told my wife, give me the checkbook. She says, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to pay this guy the $75 for this box he's got. Got a box next. You see the box right there? If I can buy the box, he's out of here. <clears throat> now watch. Now some of you guys are going to relate to this. Some of you guys are going to relate to this because this is life in Amway. It happens all the time. Who are the diamonds that do this thing? I don't know. If you ever figure it out, let me know because I'll sponsor diamonds every time. Diamonds are just like you, people that get in by accident. I said, give me the checkbook. Gives me the checkbook. She goes and gets the thing. I write it out for $75. I hand the guy $75. I said, is that for the box? He said, that's for the box. The guy didn't give me any tapes. He didn't tell me about seminars. He didn't do all the right things that you guys are told all the time. He didn't do nothing. He gave me the box. I gave him the check. He left my house. I opened my closet. I threw the box in the closet. I shut the closet. I walked away from the whole thing. And I said, man, that's the weirdest experience I ever had in my life. The guy's out of here. Are you ready for this? Listen now, listen. Never saw that man again. Never saw him again, ever. Cost him a lot of money. Real bright. He'd have an executive diamond down line today. Why didn't he hang around? You know why? I signed that little piece of paper in November of 1981. He signed the paper prior to September. He had to renew, I didn't. He didn't renew, I didn't have to renew, I slid into the next calendar year by accident. As a matter of fact, I'm an Amway accident. I'm an accident being here. Aren't you an accident being here? We're all accidents. I went to work every day, went to work. I forgot about Amway, you think I was doing Amway? Get out of here, I'm not gonna show no plan. What is this stuff, talk to somebody about Amway? Give me a break. You get an Amway, start showing the plan right away? I didn't even know anything about it. I just, I didn't even open the box, as a matter of fact, now that I think about it. 
Didn't use the soap, didn't do nothing. Not long after that, I got a call from Upline somewhere. Hello? Yes. My name is so-and-so. I say, yeah, what do you want? What's your name again? Uh, my name is so-and-so, and, -so and, and I'm, your, I'm your upline direct. You are my upline, uh, what? Hey, Kathy, it's another one of these Amway guys. He's on the phone. They call themselves names, something direct. I don't know what that means. Listen carefully, Ace. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you this one time, only one time. That was an accident. I was doing your man a favor. You follow me? I ain't doing Amway. I ain't doing Amway now. I'm not doing Amway next week. I got a job. Don't bother me anymore. I don't even know what you want from me, but I ain't doing Amway. You got it? Don't bother me anymore. I don't know what you're a direct, no direct, this direct, that direct. How about direct yourself out of my life? Click. <clears throat> hey, you know what? I know that nobody in here is like that. It's only Carrillo. That's it. You guys all got in. You love this from day one. You thought this was the greatest thing in the world. Some of you guys might have an attitude like that. Hey, one day you might be going like this as an executive diamond somewhere. That'd be a story, wouldn't it? Time goes on. They call me again. Hey, I'm your upline this and that. Get out of here, your upline. Up your line, ace, you know? <clears throat> well, you know, it's like anything else, right? They try this three or four times, whatever. That don't work. So I get another phone call one day. The guy's on the other end. Oh, I'm the Amway business. This and that is your wife home? <laughs> they knew they weren't going to get to me, so they got to her. Hey, Kathy, one of these Amway guys. Here, here's the phone. Have a good time. I'm going to work tomorrow. I'm still indicted. I want to I wanna keep saying that because there's a story behind that. I'm indicted for a felony. <coughs> they invite her to a meeting. The woman goes to this meeting. I couldn't believe it. She comes over to me. She says, I'm going to a meeting. I said, what kind of meeting? She says, an Amway meeting. They sucked you in, huh? They sucked you in. Yeah, you're up whatever it is. You're up guy. You know, the up guy got you right in there. Yeah, I got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, yeah, they got you. No problem. They got you. She goes to an Amway meeting. I know it doesn't happen. It's only in the East Coast. <laughs> only guys from New York City go through this. No California people do this stuff. Just New East Coast. She goes to a meeting, comes back. Hey, Louie, what, what? She said, did you pay attention to that Amway thing? I said, wait a minute. I ain't paying attention to no Amway thing. I ain't doing Amway. You read my lips. You understand English? I got a job. I'm going to try to stay out of jail. If I get out from under this indictment, I'm out of here. I get a job. I'll work my brains out. I'll make it happen. Don't worry about it. Relax. I ain't doing Amway. I know it doesn't happen on the West Coast. It's only the East Coast guys that act like this. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of weeks go by. A couple of weeks go by, they get her into these meetings, man. I couldn't believe it. You guys will understand this. They got my wife. I mean, they're hooking her into this. I can't get her out of Amway. She walks in the house, keeps going to these open meetings. You know, this is you, 642, back and forth. I'm going, oh, my God. The woman is getting me. I mean, it's like week after week she's on me. I'm at this Amway thing, right? She's got a dream. I said, hey, go do Amway, man. You know, nah, rock and roll. Do your thing. I don't bother me with Amway. Amway, that's for women anyway. Go do it, man. <laughs> I mean, I told her, if I'm going to do Amway, I might as well do Mary Kay. You know what I mean? I ain't doing it.
This goes on some more. One day she comes home. She says, you know where I'm going? I said, where are you going? Is it Amway? This is going on for months. Months, guys. This is not a week or two. This is months. I'm going to this thing called a function. I said, who, said, who told you to go to a function? She said, well, Tim said. I said, who's Tim? You know, she says, you know, Tim Foley's a football player, you know. He used to play for the Miami Dolphins, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, he wears a big shirt. I said, look, I don't even like football. I don't follow football. I don't know no Tim Foley. I don't even want to know him. He does Amway. Yeah, he does that. Well, go do Amway. You're going to go where? You ain't got no money. She says, oh, yes, I do. And I said, where did you get your money? She says, you may not remember, but as you're working, parking cars, and now as a detective, remember I was cleaning houses? I said, yeah. She said, remember every time I cleaned the house, they pay me $30? Remember I did that for months? She says, I saved some of my money. She says, I'm going to go to a major function. I said, well, go ahead and go. Don't worry about it. I'll just stay here with the kids, and you go have your thing, and go do your Amway deal, and, you know, when you get done, come on back, and I'm going to work. I mean, we'll come out of this thing. I'm still indicted. She goes up to an Amway function, something like this, probably a lot smaller, maybe just a chunk of people like that. She's in that room with a, maybe an upline diamond. I think it was a child or something or other, whatever it is. She goes up there with Tim Foley and Connie Foley and all these other people. Everybody's all juiced up. I'm at home. I'm indicted. I'm going to work. <clears throat> it's either going to work or going to jail, one or the other. I'm not sure yet where I'm going to end up, right? But I am indicted. Comes back from that Amway function. Her eyes are as big as plates. <laughs> Louis. I said, what? Louis. This Amway thing is bigger than you think it is. I thought to myself, it's in my house. I'm thinking to myself, Amway is in my house, man. Every week she's going to Amway meetings, she's sponsoring people, she's having a good time, she's going to seminars, this and that, back and forth. And I keep telling her, who keeps telling you to do this stuff? She said, well, Tim said, you know, I should do this and I should do that. Who's this Tim guy again? <laughs> Football player, Miami Dolphins. You know, he played Super Bowl, you know, the Super Bowl, 1972, perfect season, 17. I remember he was, he was a safety. He was one of the big shots, you know. Never heard of him. A couple of months go by. Folks, we've been in this thing now six months, eight months. I haven't hit a lick yet. I know it doesn't happen on the West Coast. It only happens on the East Coast. I keep going back to that because I know you guys are into this immediately. She comes home one day. She says, I'm going to another major function. I said, what are you talking about function? Where are you going now, woman? She says, I'm going to this thing called free enterprise. I said, who said it? She says, well, Tim said. I said, Tim. For you know, I said, this Tim guy is calling me, costing me money. You keep hanging around with Tim and Tim and Tim and Tim and Tim. This guy's costing me money. I better go meet this Tim guy. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta change my mind. I don't want to go to Amway. They're liable to suck me in. You know what I mean? Gotta be careful. <laughs> Amway people are really weird sometimes. I heard about him holding hands and God bless America and all this stuff. Not me, man. Don't touch my hand, Ace. <laughs> time goes on and time goes on, and she's going to these. She comes back from Free Enterprise. She's all loaded up for bear. You know, I mean, she's just walking, talking. You know, Amway ballistic missile, man. I couldn't believe it. Keep thinking to myself, you know, this Tim guy, Connie Foley, Tim and Connie, Tim and whatever it is, I, I don't even know these people, but they're really into this Amway deal. So one night I'm sitting at home, about 1 o'clock in the morning. Can't sleep, got to go to work the next day. 
I'm scared. Sinking out of sight. Going to court every other week. My career's over. Squeezed the life out of me. About one o'clock in the morning, I hear a knock on my door. Get up out of my chair. I said, who is it? Tim. <laughs> Tim who? <laughs> Tim Foley. I ain't doing Amway Foley. <laughs> I ain't going door to door. I don't go door to door. And what are you doing at my door? <laughs> I open my door. I'm standing in my T-shirt, cutoffs. So you're Tim Foley, huh? The Amway guy. Come on in. My wife really juiced up about Amway. I don't know what you guys do, but I'll tell you what, it's incredible. Whatever you do, I guess you're juiced up about it. He says, look, why don't you make a pot of coffee? Let's talk. I says, one o'clock in the morning. I said, I got to go to work tomorrow. He said, make a pot of coffee. <laughs> Think to myself, this guy's something else, man. Sit inside my house, make a pot of coffee. What is this? I go to my kitchen, I said, come on in, go to my kitchen. I go to my pot of coffee, I'm pouring the water, making coffee, this and that. I look back, the guy's asleep on my floor. <laughs> hey, Foley, I'm making you coffee. It's one o'clock in the morning, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I ain't doing Amway. Not now, not later, I ain't doing Amway, ever. If you want coffee, I'll make you coffee, but once I give you coffee, you gotta go back to Amway, I ain't doing it. <laughs> Thinking to myself, this guy's really into this Amway dream deal, man. This is incredible, the guy's got a dream. <clears throat> go back to the coffee pot, pour the coffee. Hey, here's your coffee, man. The Amway man, here you go, ready, rock and roll. Okay, good. He gets up, he looks at me, he says, you know what? I know what you've been through. He said, I said, you don't know nothing. I said, you don't know what I've been through, you don't know me, you don't know my problems, you don't know nothing. He says, Louis Amway's a great company. He said, you could do anything in life you want to do with the Amway business if you really put your mind to it. I said, I ain't doing Amway, man, you don't understand. I'm indicted, I'm going to jail. I did everything they said I did. I went on strike. They got all the marbles on their side of the fence. If they want to put me away for a year and a day, it's a felony, I'm gone, it's over. He says, look. He says, give Amway an opportunity. I said, you don't understand. I'm not the Amway type of guy. I know you guys go out there and talk to people and you know, whatever pyramid you got, I got all the, you know, the pyramid, you know, you put them in and this is you and you get all these people in and whatever little deal you do, I mean, I ain't doing that. He said, Louie, it's not a pyramid. It's a concept. I said, forget it. Well, thanks a lot for the coffee. Goes out of my house. Next morning, I'm going to work. I used to get up at 5.30 in the morning, go out to my little 1975 Datsun B210 hatchback. Get out to my car, and on the windshield wiper, there's a note. Pull it out. It was great meeting you last night, Louie. Give Amway a shot. Tim. Open up my car, get in my car, <clears throat> go to work. Going to court every other week. This relationship with Foley began to develop. Every few days, he'd come by, knock on my door, one o'clock in the morning. Started liking the guy. Come by, hey, make a cup of coffee. I know, make a cup of, come on, yeah, there's the floor, you fall asleep. All right, no problem, hold on a second. 
Make a cup of coffee. Here it is. Okay, Amway guys over here. All right, here's your coffee. Okay, I ain't doing Amway. I ain't doing it, but here's your coffee. No problem. Okay, we're friends, right? Woo, Amway. I ain't doing it. <clears throat> this went on. I don't know how many times. Over and over and over. He'd come by, just shake hands, be a friend. That's it. One day I realized he ain't coming around. He ain't been by for like two weeks. I go to phone. Wait a minute, I gotta go call Foley. Maybe he got sick. Hold on a minute. Hey, Foley, where you been? Hey, I'll be up at one. I'll make you coffee. Don't worry. I ain't gonna sleep on my floor. Ain't no big deal. What, are you sick? You have an accident? What's the matter? Okay, come on by. Folks, I hope you're learning something here tonight. I started liking the guy. I think it was Amway. I started liking him. See, we're starting to become friends. Just a little bit at a time. He's out of Chicago. I'm out of New York. We're the same age. We get along really well. We sort of hit it off. One day I went to him. I said, hey, you know this Amway thing you do? I said, you know, I sort of have an interest. I said, what do you think I should do? He said, are you serious? I said, yeah. He said, if you're serious, you need to come to a major function. I said, really? You mean like those two functions that my wife went without me? He said, that's right. You need to come to one of them. I said, I'll go. Saw Kathy right after that. I said, hey, we're going to a major function. She said, who said? I said, well, Tim said. I got to that major function, sat in the back of the room. I almost got trampled at the front door. I said, I'm getting out of the way. These Amway people are really strange, man. I'm getting out of the way from the door. Everybody rolled in, and I rolled in last. I sat in the back of the room, all the way back up in the bleacher with my wife, Kathy. We held hands. And from a distance, like you guys are watching Kathy and Anna, from a distance, I saw Ken and Donna Stewart go Diamond Direct. I saw Jimmy and Sue Dunn go Emerald Direct. And I saw Tim and Connie Foley be introduced on stage as New Pearl Directs. From a distance. And I was way back up in the bleachers. And I looked. And I said, could this be for me? I got up out of my chair. See, folks, I'm a man of convic for conviction. I am a man that's capable of commitment. Not everybody is. Got out of my chair and started going from table to table and shaking hands and saying, what do you do for a living? What's your name? Well, my name's so-and-so. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm an architect. Really? And you're in here? Yep. Go to another table. Hey, how you doing? My name's Louis Carrillo. What's your name? Bob so-and-so. Yeah, Bob, what do you do for a living? I'm an attorney. You're an attorney. You're here. That's great. Hey, Jim, my name's Louis Carrillo. What do you do for a living? I'm a doctor. Really? And you're here? Yeah. That's great. Went to another table. My name's Louis Carrillo. What's your name? My name's... Paul so-and-so. Really, Paul? This is your wife? Yeah, her name's Mary. That's great. Well, what do you guys do for a living? Well, I drive a truck. Really? You just drive a truck? You're here in Amway. Yeah, it's great. That's fantastic. What do you do for a living? I spent two hours asking people, what do you do for a living? You do this? You like this type of business? What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? Walked back to my chair and I sat down. And I paid attention. Nobody knew who I was, and nobody knew the hurts I had inside of my heart. Nobody knew that I was an air traffic controller. Nobody knew that I was indicted. You know what else? Nobody cared.
Got back in my car after the function was over. I drove back home. Got to work that Monday. I called my wife on the phone and I said, tonight, we're going to talk about your business. Got home that night, had a meal together. We sat down on the couch. We had a board meeting. President, vice president of the future Carrillo Internet Services Incorporated. And I said to her, Kathy, let me ask you a question. I said, do you want to be a Diamond Direct? She started crying because she had the dream without the support of her husband for almost one year. She says, I want to be a Diamond Direct. I said, honey, do you know what it'll take to do that? Do you have any idea what we're facing here? She says, no, but I want to do it. I said, well, Dad wants to do it too. And I said, beginning tomorrow, there's only one way to win in life that I know. You've got to sell out to your dreams. There's no other way to do it. There's no short path to the big win. You've got to take your licks like everybody else. Success, according to my upline crown, and I'm sure he read it somewhere, but it's a true statement. Success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile dream. Success is not the immediate fulfillment of a dream. Success is the progressive realization of a dream. I told my wife, I said, beginning tomorrow and until it happens, I show the plan every night. Get me a board and easel, put me on the tape of the week program, get me a book to read, whatever training program they've got, this is it. Tomorrow we begin and we don't ever look back. I want you guys to know that there's a story behind the wind to diamond. However, I can tell you this. I can tell you that I went direct on probation because nine months after being indicted, I got out from under my felony indictment my lawyers were able to negotiate a deal for me. I ended up with a crim criminal misdemeanor on my record. On probation. Took me another year after that to break my first direct and lost him. I talked to some of your leaders about that today. My first three years in Amway was miserable failure. But I had a dream. And a man with a dream will not be denied. No matter what happens, he will finish what he started, period. Period. When I got to Diamond Direct, I went to my first, I've been to seven Diamond meetings, Diamond, uh, go, uh, diamond clubs in Hawaii. I've been to, this is my eighth one that's coming up. Went to my first diamond meeting in 1989, because we qualified diamond in May of 88. I was sitting down with all as a brand new diamond. I had my wife next to me, and Rich the Boss gets up on stage, goes to the podium, starts talking to all the diamonds. And he looks at me for a second. He goes, Carrillo, he said, I never thought I'd say this. But I'm glad you were fired by Ronald Reagan. He says, because when you were fired by Ronald Reagan, you fell right on our lap. And we're so happy you're here. And he looked the other way. You guys getting tired? Now let me tell you my Ronald Reagan story. You know, when you make a lot of money, a lot of times you give it away. A lot of money you give away. You give away to your church. Give away to your charity organizations. My wife and I are Christian people, so we give away a lot to our ministries. And, you know, we just give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. No problem. And we give away also to our chosen political party. You give it away, give it away, give it away. So they notice you after a while. So you know what happens is they send you invitations to all kinds of stuff. 
You know, they send you, I've been invited to the White House, I don't know, five times, whatever. I ain't going with this guy in there. But anyway, I, you know, I, <clears throat> but I've been invited, you know, I, be cool, be cool. I don't want to get Jim in trouble. But anyway, <laughs> here we go, Carrillo. Here I go again, one more time. Give it away, give it away, give it away, give it away. And I'm getting all kinds of invitations, you know, all kinds of different parties. And I get a phone call one day. All the way from Arizona. I'm in Florida. Mr. Crillo, uh, we want to thank you for all the contributions you've made in the past, and we'd like to invite you. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm already a diamond. I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what this is about, right? I want to invite you to this special dinner. We're out here in Phoenix, Arizona. I said, hey, I live in Fort Lauderdale. I can't go to dinner out there this weekend. He says, well, you know, we're having a big deal, you know, it's a big dinner, and, you know, there's going to be thousands of people here. We want to, you know, have you here with us, and so much per plate, you know, and this and that, whatever it is. And we got some great speakers, and, you know, we have a great featured speaker. And I said, well, who's your featured speaker? I just threw it out there, just for the heck of it. He says, well, Ronald Reagan is our featured speaker. I said, who? I'm a diamond now. He said, uh, Ronald Reagan. I said, you mean President Ronald Reagan? He said, yeah, President Ronald Reagan is our featured speaker. I said, well, isn't, isn't, isn't that exciting? I said, uh, I said uh, how much to sit at his table? <laughs> you know, the guy throws out a note. Well, first he says to me, well, you know, <laughs> you know, that's only a table of so many people. And, you know, I mean, you know, you don't need to sit at that table. It was quite a bit of money. I said, trust me. So he throws out a number. I said, put me down for two people right next to him. He says, you want to sit at that table? I said, yes, sir. Right with him. Send you a check in the mail? No problem. I'll sit right there. Hey, sweetheart, come here. You're not going to believe this. We're going out to dinner this weekend. She said, really? We do that all the time. I said, no, but we're going a little far away this weekend. She said, where are we going? I said, Phoenix. You're going to take me out to dinner in Phoenix? I said, yeah, Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to go have dinner with Ronald and Nancy Reagan. We're going to do what, Louis? I said, we're going to go out there and have dinner with Ron and Nancy Reagan. She said, Louis, what are you going to do? True story, folks. You're going to love the ending of this. See, I don't got to do nothing, honey. We get on an airplane, we fly to Phoenix, Arizona. Sure enough, we're in this room, all kinds of people. Big shot movie stars, all kinds of movie stars, all kinds of professional football players, you know, all kinds of guys there from the Oakland Raiders and San Francisco 49ers, all kinds of Hollywood muckety bucks, you know. Uh, let's see, Robert Stack was in there, the, uh, who's in a, uh, the, the, um, the Beach Boys were there. I mean, I could just, it just, just all these big deal people, you know, walking around and, you know, there's a, you know, we're all shaking hands and this and that and we're all standing in line to go, this receiving line to see Mr. Mr. Ronald Reagan and, you know, so people are asking, what do you do? Oh, it's so great to meet you, Mr. Stack. I've seen your shows a lot. I remember when you were in this show and I remember when you were on part of the Untouchables and now you're doing that great. Oh, how are you doing? Hey, Mr. Bob Hope, it's good to see you. And I'm shaking hands with people. I'm walking, I'm a diamond direct now, walking around, just, it's great. And all these people got their little noses up in the air and they're just I am just so cool because I am this and that and you know and I'm walking around you know and I'm shaking hands and you know eventually they say well what do you do for a living well I'm an Amway distributor and what do you do for a living and I'm a this and I'm a that really oh geez you know I've heard of that company before what's your name again oh Robert Stagg and I do movies uh, that's great you're an Amway distributor yes I am yes I'm an Amway distributor that's right I didn't know there was any money in that really well I make a few bucks no problem and uh, so anyway um, everything it's great, yeah. Geez, uh, I didn't know you could make money at that. Uh, well, that's great. Well, where are you sitting? What's your table number? Oh, my table's 57. What's yours? One. You're an Amway distributor? Yep. Sure am.
Tom? I sure am an Amway distributor. You're gonna love Diamond. You're gonna love Diamond. You're gonna do stuff you won't believe, man. You're gonna love being a Diamond. So we're in this receiving line, you know, and Kathy keeps pulling on my arm. What are you gonna do, Louie? What are you gonna do, Louie? This place is full of Secret Service, Louie. CIA, Secret Service, cameras rolling. What are you gonna do? We're in line, there's the president. Don't worry, sweetheart, I'm cool, I'm cool. I think some big shot was in front. I know that Robert Stack was behind us, the guy that does the untouchables, and there's Bob Hope and another guy and another guy. All these. We're all gonna go shake hands, and we're just... What are you gonna do, Louie? No problem, honey, no problem. It's a great place. I mean, a lot of big shots in here, you know? No problem. We're getting closer. Tell me what you're gonna do. I don't know yet. I'm praying about it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Secret service everywhere. Look, look who's over there. Look, look. Here it is, boys and girls. I wish that you could have been a fly on my shoulder. I'm next. Hello, Mr. President. My name's Louis Carrillo. Well, it's nice to meet you, Louis. It's my wife, Nancy. How are you? Nice to see you, Nancy. It's my wife, Kathy. Mr. President, I want to thank you for something that you did to me 10 years ago. He says, really? Secret Service moves in. <laughs> Kathy's whispering, what are you going to do? I don't want to go to jail with you this time. You've been there before. I want you to know, do you remember, Mr. President, in 1981, there was a big, massive air traffic controller strike? You remember what you did, Mr. President? You fired 12,000 air traffic controllers. Remember you did that? Well, yes, sir, I sure do. I remember that. Sir, I was one of those that you fired. I used to work at Miami International Airport. Secret Service now really gets close. <laughs> I was one of those that you fired in 1981, Mr. President. I want you to know I was indicted for a felony. I got out from under that, spent two years on probation. And, sir, I wanted to thank you for doing that because after you did that to me, I got an incredible attitude about life. And I went out and I built myself a multi-million dollar company that I own today. I'm independent, and I just wanted to thank you for the lesson you taught me. Thank you very much, sir. I want you to know that there's not another air traffic controller that I've ever heard of that was fired in 1981 and brought it all the way back around and faced the man that fired him and sat down and had dinner with him, had a great conversation with him, and stood up as a winner one more time. I have yet to hear, hear about it. Thank you.